Hi guys and welcome back to my channel and if you are new then a big huge welcome to you and welcome to day two of World Autism Awareness Week and I haven't mentioned it before but I probably won't mention it in the other videos but just this one but if you have finished all of the videos if you are coming back to the future and if you want to check out some of the interviews and collabs that I've done I will leave all the links in the description box down below so in today's video I have been interviewing Andy from Indie Andy to talk about his life and his perspective during the lockdown and talking about how he felt and working from home and his YouTube channel but then also to share on his thoughts about what he thought about how the community has been challenged during the past 12 months but with community I meant the autism community but I won't go into too much detail because I will leave it over to me and Andy and just a little bit of a note I do apologise if the screening from me and Andy is a little bit funny and it goes up and down. We had a bit of Wi-Fi problems at the beginning and then also I don't really film with my laptop because my laptop's agent and with all the collabs I've planned to record on my iPad but unfortunately the sound went so I really couldn't do that so I end up having to switch to film on my phone but then yes that's all I have left to say so here's over to Andy for the interview. So it is day two of World Autism Awareness Week and we are going to continue with the theme from what we discussed yesterday but we've got a different person because we have the wonderful Mr Andy Burns from Indie Andy with us today. Hello. <laughs> and um, we're going to be talking about um, what Andy's experience and perspective was like during the all three lockdowns last year and this year. Andy, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, certainly. Uh, well, my name's Andy. I'm a 28-year-old person. I keep forgetting my age, so I'm going to question myself on that one. But uh, I was diagnosed with autism in age 4, 5, 1996, 1997. So I've been diagnosed for a while. And basically, I make content on YouTube under the Indie Andy YouTube channel uh, weekly. And like says, I'll be also uploading videos this week. But to be honest, I actually don't have anything planned to talk about the, the situation or anything to do with the situation. So I, I guess where do we start off, says, with, with this one? Well, I, I, I think I, I just, I had a little bit of a preparation because I knew that it's going to be really hard to explain what it was like, really, because everyone can actually talk about their own experiences, really. But with each experience it's a little bit harder because you get like loads of stories about what it's like for individuals and parents especially since there was a recent article in the national autistic society magazine about a mum and her experiences during lockdown with her six-year-old daughter but we're going to get to that in a second <laughs> before lockdown what was your life like in terms of routine? I mean, did you have a daily routine? Did you uh, do any hobbies and activities outside the house that you were interested in, that you never got to do the chance with all three lockdowns? Well, what, what was it like? It was um, manic at the time before the first lockdown last year, especially. Um, so I would go to work during the day, the weekday, and you know uh, go back home on the weekend i would uh, practice with my band uh me and my fiance would uh, go out on date days or date nights and uh things like that but it was always full of busy we were always uh, traveling around to see people we were always um it was constant go 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 pretty much all all of the time for me then the first lockdown came about and pretty much I haven't actually been in the same room as my band for over well nearly a year now at this point um and yeah uh, pr pretty much I'm not going into the office as, as much now but when the first lockdown came uh, I was working from home um doing my normal nine to five job last year in comparison to this year, is completely di uh, completely different. Um, what about you? Was there um, any activities and things that you did? Well, you were doing for the first lockdown. Like how? Like is it different for you? 
Yeah, it was different for me, actually. Um, I'm trying to like think because um, I know that um, with, with the same as you, it was date days with my boyfriend and then um, it was a hanging out with friends and then I was um, going out with my family and then my friend who is also my carer and then I would just go to like different places uh, like go to London and um, just go locally or go swimming or use public transport and um, I, I was in a little bit of a pickle really during the last year because um, I lost my first job well I actually quit my first job because it wasn't going in very well and I was just trying to pick my life up where it was and then when the first lockdown happened I was like things can't get any worse can it how did it really affect you um, as well Andy did it affect you that did you have like meltdowns constantly or did you uh, know that you had to um, change things uh, at the last minute especially because you and your fiance were planning to get married last year from what I understand yes that is very much true um, it it impacted on um, me quite badly, I think, uh, especially the first lockdown. Everything was changing. Nobody had a clue what was happening. As much as I would, you know, say that it was, well, I guess uh, about me, but it wasn't, you know, everyone was in the same boat. No one had a clue what was happening. And for me, I was really, really stressed out because people were asking me uh, what I needed to work from home. And I was, uh, in in the office it was like one day in the office i was saying we're not set up to work from home you know i'm not set up to work from home what is this all of? <laughs> I, I, I was just so like oh my oh my god what am i meant to do um to to be honest when i'm stressed i do i do get grumpy i do get really grumpy and i but i think as soon as we got into it got a bit easier over time but it wasn't smooth sailing I mean uh, with the the whole wedding that got cancelled uh, basically we went into lockdown in the UK end of March we were supposed to get married uh, end of April last year um, still haven't gotten married yet it's been moved to September 2021 um, and I'm, I mean, everyone's been uh, great about that, though. Everyone's been really, really uh, good and moving things over and things, but it's just, mm. just been really stressful overall, to be honest. I know that you said that your mental health has been affected. And in a way, when it has been affected, I I'm trying to like, think of um, how the way to put this, really. Was it like being off the rails with it and and you just had to constantly rely on support with your fiance or with contacts or anything like that yeah um if that makes sense <laughs> no no it makes no it makes total sense to me don't worry um basically um with the whole mental health aspect of it particularly during the first lockdown because uh, we weren't able to travel you know it was, uh it was very much like stay in your homes. Normally for me, I, I like going out and about, getting myself out and about. And uh, also for me, seeing people at the time was quite important because I kind of knew. And every, everyone in my close family knows really that uh, if I'm not around uh, people like a, a lot, I do kind of uh, become secluded and well, potentially isolated so the way I, def I definitely feel less sociable now <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I do try my best I do try my best to be sociable but it's just it's not the, it's not the same I was um the, for, for me I don't really tend to message a lot of people anyway unless you know it's people who live far away like yourself says if it's people who live close by I, I tend to keep stuff until i see them um that's just the way i've always been um it's just e it's just easier that way but yeah because because the whole lockdown thing it, it was just a massive like transition uh from doing being able to do all these things to not which i think i've been able to do but i think as well being stuck inside the majority of the time now it's just uh i don't know i just want to be able to 
uh, now be able to go out and uh, uh, do things, to, uh, to be honest. I was going to say, so, has COVID in, in general affected like your mental health in, in a similar sort of way, or has it been different? It's a funny thing you should say that, because I know that with me, I know that my... I wouldn't say my mental health was bad because um, I, I just reacted differently because normally I'm a happy person but I always found that the first lockdown and the third lockdown were really really hard and most people agree with me since they said that the third lockdown was harder because it was cold and it, there was nothing much to do with like the first lockdown but I think when it happened to me for the first time I, I just got a little bit worried and scared and I was tearful all the time and I asked my dad because before the lockdown happened we were asked to shield because he was over 70 and his doctor advised him to shield but then that led into a miscalculation because that really avoided me from seeing my boyfriend and then seeing all my friends and also I volunteer so I couldn't really do that either mm -hmm. and they put me in a difficult position and I turned my attention to art and junk journaling because that was the only way I could cope. I couldn't do my YouTube videos. I just felt like I'm not in the right state for it. But I think since then, art just really helped me feel relaxed. And I, I still continue to do art, really, because if, I, if COVID didn't happen, I would give myself to do the junk journal challenge, which I post frequently well used to post frequently on instagram but i think i've learned something new for all of this and it helped me made me feel calmer but it, it's just like one of those things really you're just gonna have to do what you have to do really i suppose i definitely agree with that and um i, I definitely remember her uh, seeing uh, uh, your journals and thinking wow that's absolute that's actually really amazing uh, that uh, sound that sounded really bad actually <sighs> No, no, I hope no, you know no. what you mean. I hope you know what I mean. Um, it was really awesome, really awesome to see that during the first lockdown. We would, um, I was doing um, Zoom quizzes, um, because we obviously couldn't meet up in person. Um, like my sister and uh, her friends, we would just do uh, Zoom quiz quizzes, getting like sort sorting out parts of the quiz and things, which was really cool. It was, it was, it was nice for me to do because it, it gave me a distraction. Uh, from everything that was going on, I do agree though. Like the uh, the third lockdown, um, like around, uh, like around winter and Christmas and things. Um, to be honest, that, that it's been it's been it it's been difficult because it's because like you say, it's been um well cold and stuff. I don't know. I've definitely I don't know. Just I've I found the lockdowns uh, tricky because it's. I think for I think for me it was just what do I well what do I do what can we do what can't we do but like yourself it has allowed me to do like uh, new things that I didn't have the time to do before like um, I started collecting uh, Pokemon cards. I saw that that looks really cool actually. Yeah, uh, like um, just the time with um, the whole COVID situation, it's just allowed me to watch. Um, new people that I don't know. <laughs> I just I just got in. I just got into everything and everything and everything. And I just thought, you know what? I'm just gonna start collecting Pokemon cards because I, I kept seeing YouTubers who uh, collected, and it was just just the thrill of opening packs and uh, putting them in binders and stuff. So I've I've been doing that since the start of, uh, 2021, and it's just it's just it's nice having something else to do, you know, away from all of the screens and stuff. Oh yeah, I agree actually, because normally uh, I would um I plan to do with like the screens. I would probably oh what's the right words to put this? Uh, like try watch a show, but the trouble is you have to pay, and it's really frustrating because you want some entertainment during lockdown, but if you have to pay for them, you just think oh what's the point but it's just always nice to do something that you can do for free really by the sound of it <laughs> <laughs> well 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 I, I wish the pokemon collecting was free but it's <laughs> it's definitely not <laughs> but no I mean, I mean it's 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 just nice being able to uh, being able to do things that i didn't either have the time for or didn't have an interest in at the, at the time um the 
I don't know, just, I don't know. It, it's just nice being able to look at something and uh, just appreciate the art of it, I guess, for, uh, for me. It's just nice having something for, for myself uh, as, as well. You mentioned working from home. What was that like personally for you? Did you find it okay or did you find that you would prefer to work in the office or do you find yourself like, uh, you're not really too sure in between and you would probably like to find out what's comfortable for you once the lockdown is over at the beginning i hated the idea absolutely hated the idea um i mean when when like the first few weeks of the first lockdown happened i just felt so unproductive because uh like this the, this room is normally where i record all of my youtube videos and that's it's that was its only function that there was no other purpose for anyone to come in here apart from me to, to film. But now a year later, I've been working, working in here for, for work at the time. Absolutely hated it because it just distractions um, that you would normally uh, get at home when you're in the office. So I hated it at the time because it was just, it was just all chaotic and crazy. But to be honest, I actually have grown to like elements of it. For example, it's, I don't know, more confident being at home in comparison to the office that I'm normally working. And I've, there's actually less distraction, so I'm actually able to do um, a lot more, I feel, at home in comparison to the office. Because uh, just noise distractions and just uh, people uh, just uh, wanting to have a chat about different things. I think the longer it's gone on, the longer... I've had to think about the positives and also the negatives of it, really. It's interesting, though, with the differences between working from home because of distractions and then working in the office where you can fully concentrate. It just makes sense, really, in a way to actually feel comfortable within your own space, really. And mm. maybe in like some sense, it's really like interesting because what if like the work environment you're in is just a bit too busy and it could be overwhelming. And then when you're at home, you just feel calm and relaxed. And it, it's just basically different things for different people. Yeah, and, and also as well, I've never worked from um, home on a professional level ever. So as uh, really my first time experiencing it but I have to I have to say like after a year of being at, at home while working from home and of of, of course being uh, really lucky and being in the position that I am in having work and being able to work from home because obviously uh, some people have not had that opportunity and they've had that opportunity taken away because of uh, job losses and things but I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I'm. I'm just uh, grateful to to still be working and um, have. I guess have that luxury, especially these days. It's like a blessing in one way, but then you find out in another way it challenges you, and it, it just challenges you how you can work as an employee, or it could challenge yourself as like an individual in a way. If that makes sense. Hmm. Yeah, no, t no, it totally does. But then also, I have been trying to follow in your videos, but then during lockdown, from a whole year, your YouTube channel bounced. Like, you went from, like, 2,000 subscribers to 3,000 and to 10,000. How did you do it? What was your secret? What, what we want to know? Because I know that the whole world wants to know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, do, I don't think many people would be interested in, <laughs> in that in that. <laughs> in that ad. So, on a stand set, I actually just try to uh, carry on as much as possible I guess I, I think also because people a load of people were at home I, I think that had a lot to do with it actually I feel like I uploaded less last year in 2020 than I did the year before but somehow somehow it it, it just all just seemed to work out at the at the right time but uh, the most important thing for me though it, it's not about being this, you know, person with 10,000 subscribers or anything like that. It's the more time I've uh, made videos, the, the less I've actually, I really care about the numbers side of it. Um, what I honestly care about is just uh, being able to help people with my videos. I've honestly just <clears throat> kind of, uh, I, I kind of just don't look at the numbers now because it's just like, they don't really mean anything, like the views or whatever. It's about 
making videos that help people that that's what I try to think about and it, it, I don't know it must reflect in it must reflect somehow because uh obviously we're at this stage now and it's uh I, I'm just I'm honestly I'm just grateful but I think definitely COVID had a lot to do with it though I, I can't say it was all down to me or any or anything like that it was really good though because um they you had a lot of positive feedback for the YouTube videos and um you, you did so many things with the videos you did podcasts you did interviews which I thought it was absolutely amazing and and I'm very proud of you really I am because you've come so far but I'm also like interested to know what what was your favorite vlog that you filmed during COVID and lockdown Ooh. or probably top two or top three? Oh, I'm gonna have to have a look at the channel because I don't actually know what I actually filmed <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, basically guys when you get to a stage where you like, have a, a video out every every week or so you just you honestly just forget it, it sounds crazy i know but definitely the podcast with my fiance i really enjoyed doing that was a lot of fun um the first the first one we just talked about relationships what grinds our gears that sort of thing it was just fun doing something with my fiance um to be honest but non-podcast never have i ever uh i did with Orti Simsara or Orti Simsara. Uh, it was all her idea. A funny story about that actually. Uh, we were setting up the uh, the collab and I had a completely different video. It was all filmed, everything, but basically the file got corru got corrupted. So luckily she had enough footage uh, from her video because we did her video first. So basically I, I just said, I'm sorry, the my video got corrupted is that what what do you want to do and she said oh i'm just i can just give you the footage from uh from mine because i've got a load of excess anyway and I, so <laughs> <laughs> well it does sound like quite fun really but i really enjoyed the podcast with you and your fiance because i i thought it was really really good this is the thing though i always enjoy videos or podcasts that are related to relationships because I always find them so interesting because it gives the sense that autistic people can be in relationships whether their partner is autistic or not and that's the case in one of my friends um she's a lesbian but her partner isn't autistic but um it, it's really nice to see how people can actually relate to that relation videos and podcasts they tend to be more of the popular ones because uh, people feel like they're not alone and uh, they they can be in the relationship so they allow uh, them to have hope uh, especially during that time anyway yeah definitely yeah um i, I think also i started the podcast because i just wanted to um just talk to people uh like i say i, I kind of became as like a like a bit of a hermit so uh it was nice for me just to um set things up but the podcast now i'm i'm just gonna just uh do, do episodes whenever like this um it, it started to become less enjoyable especially during these times as well um with us kind of like last few months opening back up again then shutting back down all this sort of thing i don't know i i don't know it became more work and i didn't want it to become work uh so uh basically the plan of the podcast now is just to uh just do ep episodes uh, whenever but to be honest, during the lockdowns and everything, um, like I've gotten into more podcasts. It, it's just, I guess, I guess for me, it's just as well. It's just nice uh, hearing um, hearing stories from real people and just it, it, like just just social media in general. Just well, YouTube podcasts, that sort of things has been really, really good. And uh, I don't know, just providing an, an escape. I would say. We the roadmap now coming into place um that's started right now and then hopefully with like fingers crossed and if it goes to plan what are the five bits that you're looking forward to once lockdown is fully over first thing going to an amusement or an arcade honestly oh yeah oh quite oh god honestly Honestly, it's just the, the first thing that uh, me and my fiance want to do. Well, it's the first thing that I want to do. She wouldn't disagree with me because it's just great. Second, just being able to travel. 
just anywhere, just anywhere other than uh, just any, yeah, anywhere other than um, uh, my my well, the the county that I live in. Um, <laughs> I mean, I've I've travelled to my parents during the course of the the lockdowns and stuff, but I like I I haven't actually been into the centre of the place where I live in over a year so it would be nice just to go around and explore that again and remember oh I didn't realise that was there didn't remember and well it's been there the entire time you just have not seen it for a year um oh what else what else uh, oh going going to see my band rehearse that sort of thing I have my wedding I know it's like four on my list I'm just thinking of things uh, now because <laughs> it's just so <laughs> far in the future that I can't actually think <laughs> Uh, but no, wed <laughs> wedding, wedding, definitely wedding, and um, I don't know. On my days off, being able to to go to the city of Newcastle, have a walk around. Honestly, like uh, with this whole experience, that's just the one thing I feel like I haven't been able to do. Just uh, on my days off, go out somewhere and just I don't know, not not experience. Like just being around people, just I don't know, just yeah. It's it's one thing when I uh, when I had time off, I would actually do. I would go off on my own to the city of Newcastle and just have a have a walk have a walk round, just aimlessly. And if there's things I needed to pick, uh, wanted to pick up, I would just pick up. But yeah, those are my kind of five things. What about you, says 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 says? <laughs> <laughs> all right, don't worry. This is a hard one because uh, I know that. Um, I want to do so many things. First of all, go to London because um, me and my friend, we always go to London together and we said to each other, you know what, let's go to Hampton Court Palace because it's one of my favourite palaces in the whole entire world. And then um, hopefully me and my boyfriend want to go away on holiday. Um, we sort of did that before the second lockdown because uh, we usually either try to do like something special or just keep things to a minimum for our anniversary and mm. since our anniversary is coming up in September we were thinking of going away on holiday for a few days but mm, we're thinking about staying in the UK because obviously we don't know what the situation is abroad but if it's safe and if it's given the all clear to go my boyfriend would love to take me to Italy because um, he went a few years ago with his college and um, I'm very a bit guilty really because I'm caught with Italian and I've never been to Italy so I'm a disgrace to my heritage really <laughs> 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 and then oh. oh this is so much though i know that seeing my friends is another thing because one of my friends is expecting in july and then one more thing is that i would really love to actually be more independent i set goals for myself to move out of my house because i obviously still live with my parents and then probably have my own place but i was planning to do that do that but because of covid i couldn't but mm. it might be a chance really to do that depending on the, what the regulations are but i think the most important thing to do is just be around with friends and family really who you haven't seen and just give them a massive hug and high five really normally people would say uh, people with autism they, they don't really like hugging or like kissing or anything i'm one of those people who does like it really and it's <laughs> you just kind of like miss that interaction and this is one of the things i really really miss so definitely when it comes to the 21st of june i'm like yeah i'm gonna hug everyone and i'm not gonna let anyone go <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually talking about that point actually it's a really good point um i feel i feel like since obviously um obviously covid's uh, been a thing i feel like people kind of kind of get well People have obviously been like socially distancing and all that sort of thing, not going for like a hug or whatever, whatever, whatever it is. I'm not really like a huggy person unless it's like uh, just pe people I know or or whatever. I mean, I didn't actually, uh, I didn't really hug my my own mum till about a couple of years ago when I actually moved out because I don't know, just. Just one of those, just one of those days. Wasn't really too keen on it. I actually miss just being able to hug my friends and things like things like that. It's just so weird, to be honest. I guess the, the thing that uh, that has been good though 
uh, about it is like people being able to like, keep their distance and things, especially uh, going out and about. I think people are a little bit more uh, think more about it, which is quite nice. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't know what, any other way of putting it, uh, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, that, that's completely fine. And then also, just like a, a light little quick thing, um, mm. me and Connor were talking about yesterday about how the autism community was affected during last year and this year, especially with um, music, the film, and the Sunflower Lanyards and all of that. Do you find that in between those 12 months, do you think that the community has been more challenged than ever? And what are the lessons that people can learn for understanding autism and how they can make people in the autism community feel included? Oh, it's a very good question. I definitely do agree, agree that the community has been challenged, mainly because obviously um, with, I mean, just with the whole face covering situation that came about from the start, you'd, you, you'd obviously have autistic people who didn't uh, feel comfortable wearing a face covering and obviously the whole argument of well it's to protect the public and all of these sorts of things and obviously sunflower and yards came up which uh, yeah it's 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 quite an interesting one because i think normally uh people would be more up in arms about it but i think people have just kind of accepted some things have to be the way that they are i guess um, I mean, I just, I, hmm, I think, I think it has been ch a, ch a challenge, but I think in general, uh, how people can support autistic people is just by just checking in, see if they're okay and things, and just, I, I don't know, I don't know, to be honest, because I'm trying to think, in my perspective, like, I'm quite happy just... <laughs> just being left alone sometimes also as well I, I think the landscape's changed so much that it's kind of it's kind of hard to say how to support autistic people apart from um saying that um you know just by uh just by being there final question do you have any tips or do you have any like suggestions for anyone who wants to develop a new routine or just to plan slowly with things ahead uh, once we come out of actual lockdown in the summer so for example uh, try to get back into an old routine that um, you had last year or try to set like new goals new challenges or, or what do you think Andy um I think, I think when just all of this is over, maybe actually doing some sort of list of the stuff that you've done during lockdown, maybe taking those forward or maybe leaving them behind. Um, the only reason I'm thinking about that is because I was uh, watching a video from a friend. Um, it, it was kind of a jokey video saying this sort of thing is going to, what I'm going to keep going forward and other ones i'd rather you know just leave as they were in there the lockdown period but i think actually that might be helpful for some people actually figuring out what they uh, have actually done in lockdown what things have helped them and maybe taking those forward into the um you know uh, into post lockdown post corona really i guess in general um for me i'm just, I'm, I'm only gonna speak for myself really um I think go, going into it, I'm going to uh, try and look after myself more because what I'd noticed, especially after they, like, you know, go, going into lockdown, well, multiple times now, four people weren't really looking after themselves. I know I felt like I was running myself ragged, but I feel a bit stronger now in saying, no, I need a break. This is what I need to do um, now rather than before. So I think, you know, post everything, post situation, I think my advice to people is just uh, know when you're like not okay to say, you know, I need a break for myself, you know, whether it's bubble baths, peppermint bubble baths, whether it's, I don't know, reading a book, you know, taking the time to look after yourself is I think the most important thing, especially post lockdown where, you know, 
it might go back to being totally normal. It might not be. I guess as well, just, uh, I don't know, just, I don't know, try and plan. <laughs> try and uh, plan as much as uh, possible, I guess. Um, it's kind of hard because you obviously, we obviously don't know what's going to happen post-lockdown. But uh, I don't know, just 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 make just making sure you have everything in place to you know move forward and make sure you i don't know checking in with people as well i, I guess oh, that definitely that's a brilliant answer really because um i know when uh when you said uh, bubble buffs and just like i haven't had a bubble buff for ages that, that's something that i really want to do as well <laughs> uh, i <laughs> have i have really nice tlc <laughs> I haven't. Uh, I I don't normally do baths, but I, I kind of want to have one now. Just by the, just <laughs> me saying it. <laughs> Can't go wrong with doing that, really. And it's always nice just to have a just relax and then the TLC. And um, I, I'm sure your fiance will probably feel the same way as well. Just um, trying to relax and just have a little bit of um, me time. And I think really because she must have like worked really hard to support you during lockdown as well. Yeah. No. She definitely. She definitely did. Plus, um, uh, she was obviously working um, at home with uh, home as well. Yes, you know we've just tried to look out for each other, um, each other, and also as well because of the lockdowns as well. Like we, we actually spent more time with each other. I think that was the thing that um, I know I was certainly um, feeling affected by before the lockdowns and everything, and uh, not really spending much time with my fiance because I was always here there and everywhere so it was nice feeling grounded and it's um i don't know it's just made me appreciate my fiance a lot more like not that i didn't appreciate her before but actually making the uh, time for us to do things i guess it does sound like you, you two have like really had like a stronger bond really during lockdown really um because i know you two have like a really strong bond but your bond just becomes very stronger really i think so i, I, I think uh, we just we naturally do get along anyway um but I, I do i do feel um just over lockdown and everything i guess we've just gotten stronger together and um like we don't have much to talk about <laughs> to be uh, to be <laughs> honest as, as much as we used to yeah, like not much has changed for us really <laughs> andy it was really wonderful to interview you and thank you so much it, it was an absolute pleasure and if you want to look at andy's channel or i will leave all the links in the description box down below but andy thank you so much it's been a pleasure and hopefully looking forward to interview again very soon once lockdown's over <laughs> oh yeah no yeah no definitely and uh if you're not subscribed to says please do there's a button below click it click the bell you know because you know you've been great you've been great and uh i feel so unprepared where you you were more prepared than <laughs> you were more prepared than me <laughs> so obviously obviously, obviously subscribe to says because you know she planned all uh, all this for me to come on i, I just i kind of just hopped on so uh, no, thank you so much, Says. Oh, you're welcome, Andy, and thank you. But, well, it's just, and take care of yourself as well, because you, you deserve some TLC as well, and, of course, your fiancé as well. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> And that was the interview. I really enjoyed collaborating with Andy and it was such a huge pleasure. And like I said before, if you want to check out Andy's channel, I will leave his channel link in the description box down below and please go check him out. He is absolutely amazing. In tomorrow's video, I'm going to be chatting with my good friend, Claire, Claire Carmichael, to talk about how the National Health Service actually supports the autistic community, not just during lockdown and covid but throughout the whole criteria from gps to hospitals and until then guys i hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are in the world and as always always remember to keep on dreaming and never stop believing stay safe stay well stay happy and i will see you tomorrow bye